Amen. Is it good to be in God's house this morning? Amen. Amen. No place I'd rather be. Amen. Amen. We serve a perfect father, don't we? Our God is such a good God. And uh, this morning, I just really feel that this is a word, not just for our mothers, but for all of us today. Um, I sense such an urgency in the hour in which we live to call upon the name of the Lord on behalf of not only our children, but the children and this generation. And uh, this morning, we're going to be looking at an example of a godly mother in scripture by the name of Jochebed. And some of you may already know um, who her son was, but Jochebed being the mother of Moses. But we're going to be discussing this morning precious baskets because we have all come this morning carrying our precious baskets. And we're going to talk a little bit more about what that means and maybe what is inside your basket or maybe this morning what God is beckoning you to place in that basket to release and entrust into his care. So this morning, if you would turn in your Bibles, we're going to be looking in the book of Exodus chapter 1. We're going to be beginning in verse 15 there and reading through chapter 2, verse 10. But as we do... Um, those of you uh, that have parented children, you, do you, can you recall in your mind a time when you first had to leave them in the care of someone else? Anybody? Okay. Anybody else? Were you scared to death? Were you nervous? <laughs> you don't want to entrust your child, your flesh and blood to just anyone, do you? Uh, that's something, hopefully, you put a lot of thought, a lot of prayer, a lot of investigating into prior to leaving them in the care of someone else. But I want you to know this morning that you can have utter peace because whatever it is that's your baby, whatever it is that is so precious to you that is treasured, you can trust the Lord with that. You can trust the Lord with your children. You can trust the Lord even with your shattered dreams. You can trust the Lord with your family. You can trust the Lord with the uncertainty of what the future holds. Whatever it is that's so dear to your heart and precious to you, you can safely place it in God's hands and know that he can be trusted. I read this morning, I was uh, reading kind of just comical stories of what has transpired maybe under the watchful eye of a babysitter. And uh, in Parents Magazine, they had several different articles written, and one parent wrote in and said that the first time they had used this particular sitter, they came home only to find that the eight-year-old and the eight-month-old had their faces completely covered uh, with black permanent marker. And the babysitter was on the couch talking to someone on the phone. And she had apparently told the eight-year-old, why don't you go take your little baby brother or sister and go color? And that's what they thought coloring meant. <laughs> so I'm thankful I never walked home to something quite like that. I did stumble upon Caleb and a friend one time. They decided they were going to be warriors, and they painted their stomachs with paint. They were just a little too quiet, but that was under my care, so I can't even blame anybody for that. <laughs> but this morning... You need to know that whatever it is, maybe even this morning, I, I really felt so strongly that there were going to be some of you today that are so burdened for your children that you just feel as though you can't think of anything else. It's almost gotten to the point where it consumes your thoughts. Know that God loves them even more, even more than you love them, and you can entrust them into his hands. Exodus chapter 1, starting in verse 15. Exodus 1, starting in verse 15. We read, The king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, whose names were Shifra and Pua, When you help the Hebrew women in childbirth and observe them on the delivery stool, if it's a boy, kill him. But if it is a girl, let her live. The midwives, however, feared God and did not do what the king of Egypt had told them to do. They let the boys live. Then the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and asked them, Why have you done this? Why have you let the boys live? The midwives answered Pharaoh, Hebrew women are not like Egyptian women. They're vigorous and give birth before the midwives arrive. So God was kind to the midwives, and the people increased and became even more numerous. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families of their own. Then Pharaoh gave this order to all his people. Every boy that is born you must throw into the Nile, but every girl you let live. Now a man of the house of Levi married a Levite woman, and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him for three months. But when she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch. Then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. 
Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe, and her attendants were walking along the riverbank. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her slave girl to get it. She opened it and saw the baby. He was crying, and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered. And the girl went and got the baby's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this baby and nurse him for me, and I will pay you. So the woman took the baby and nursed him, and when the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. She named him Moses, saying, I drew him out of the water. Let's just pray over God's word this morning. Lord God, I know the things that you've laid on my heart, but Lord, I pray right now that you would guide me in the words that I choose to speak, that they would be your words to your people today to bring hope and encouragement, to bring healing where needed. God, we love you. We just commit this service to you, this time of studying your word. We thank you that it is alive and active. God, I just pray, Lord, that you would speak to us, your children today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You see, church, we read in this, in this passage of scripture, there was an edict given by the king of Egypt to basically wipe out every Hebrew son. And you know, I can't help but think that the enemy hasn't changed much, has he? We live in a different day and age, and yet that is still his plan, to wipe out God's children, to come at us at every angle, to attack us any chance he gets. But the same God that rescued those Hebrew boys is the same God that we serve today. And he is still on the throne, and he is still watching over you, and he is watching over your children, and those treasures that are so close to your heart. 1 Peter 5, 8, and 9 says, Be self-controlled and alert. The enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that your brothers and sisters throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And we know John 10, 10 tells us that the thief comes only to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But church, we don't need to lose heart. We serve an awesome God. We serve a powerful God. We serve a God who hears the cries of his children. Children. And your prayers today are powerful and effective. And we're going to look at that. We're going to take just a second to look at Moses' mother. Now, in the passage that we just read, she's simply referred to as a Levite woman. But if we were to turn over to Exodus chapter 6, verse 20 in the genealogy, her name is referenced. And her name was Jochebed, or in the Hebrew, Yaakoved, which literally means Yahweh is glory, or the one true God, I am, is glory. Now, she learned quite early on that she was not going to give up without a fight. How many of you are thankful that Jochebed chose to place her faith in God and not let her fears override her faith? And there's someone here this morning that needs to know that even though that fear is staring you down in the face, let your faith speak louder. Let your faith speak louder. Look to your Savior and place your trust in him. We know that Jochebed was a very tenacious woman. She was incredibly determined. She did not allow her decisions to be influenced by her fear, but rather her faith. She was given this amazing, precious gift in the form of baby Moses, and she rolled up her sleeves and she determined in her heart that she was going to fight to keep that gift safe. Similarly, church, we've got to rise up this day. We have got to rise up this day. I will forever say, I don't know why, for one second, we think as believers that we can sit back and just chill because Satan is not playing games, and so we can't afford to play games either. And how many of you are thankful? We don't have to fight it in ourselves. We don't have to be wise enough or strong enough or smart enough or talented enough. We need to get on our knees and call upon the name of God who is able today, church. Amen? Amen. We need to rise up with that same tenacity, that same spirit that, that Jochebed had. She knew that she had to wage war on behalf of her son. Church, we've got to wage war on behalf of our children, on behalf of our generation. It's starting younger and younger and younger. Um, I even debated whether to share this, but we need to understand the reality. I know John and I, uh, sometimes I don't even want to watch the news too much because it can be so heavy. But I encourage you, if and when you're watching, just take those needs to God. But he and I both looked at each other at one point this week. We just happened to have the news on. And I, I truly couldn't even believe what I was hearing upon um, the passing of a precious eight-year-old boy this past week who took his life after being bullied. 
eight years old. Church Satan's not playing games. We have got to seek the face of God and stand in the gap for those who so desperately need truth, who need hope, who need to know that there is a God who can and will rescue them. So I implore you today, if you hear nothing else that I say, be willing to step up to the plate like Jochebed and do what needs to be done to roll up your sleeves and call upon the name of the one true God on behalf of others. We see that it didn't stop with her, though. And I just want to speak to a mo- for a moment to all the ladies here that maybe you have not had the, the blessing of, of being a natural mother. Know that you are so instrumental in the kingdom of God. God has a special calling and an anointing upon your life. And when we look in this passage, and we're going to break it down in just a minute, Jochebed was not the only one that did what God called her to do. And she by no means was the only woman who was used mightily. We see the midwives who were not even yet believers of the one true God because they were willing to do what was right. God used them and they are listed among these group, this women, these women of faith. We see Miriam, Moses' sister. I really liken her to an intercessor, a watchman on the wall. As she stood there on the banks of the Nile, just watching silently. But isn't that a precious reminder, church, that even when we can't see God in the midst of our uncertainties, We're never, ever out of his watchful care. He's standing there. He's watching. He's got a plan. He's already set it in motion, even when we can't see. And Miriam was willing. She made herself available. And sometimes, church, that's all it takes. We sit and wait, and we think, well, when I get this done in my life or or when this happens, God is simply saying, will you go for me? And he just wants to use available, willing vessels We also see even the daughter of Pharaoh, the daughter of Pharaoh, two things we're going to look at in a moment. She saw, she saw, you know, sometimes we can look at a ton of things and never really see, you know, we, we live in a day and an age where we can become so immune and and numb, numb to the reality of the depth of the hurt that others are facing. We can be guilty of just scrolling through. Oh, isn't, oh, that's a shame. Oh, look at that. Oh, look what, oh, or even gossip. God forbid. But what if we stopped and we sought the face of God on behalf of those that are hurting? And we really looked uh, and we saw the need. And we see that Pharaoh's daughter did. God used her. And she saw and then she had compassion. A couple things as we break down this passage of scripture. Starting in Exodus 1 verses 15 and 16 and then verse 22. We see that an edict was made by Pharaoh to kill every Hebrew boy. Like I said earlier, church, we live in a day and an age which the enemy is still, that's his plan, is to wipe out God's children and to go after our children. But we already know who won. Amen, church? We don't need to feel defeated. We don't need to be afraid. But we need to rise up in faith and do what he's asking of us. We also see here that the midwives whom I referenced earlier, were not even followers of the one true God necessarily, yet they feared God more than man, which led to them doing the right thing. They chose, church, hear me out. Everything that I'm going to share today, it's a choice. You know, sometimes we think, oh, I just wish I had more faith. I wish I had more faith. If we choose to believe, that faith will rise within us. If we choose to do what God's calling us to do, he'll give us the strength to do it. But we need to choose to invest in the lives of others. And these midwives, they chose, even putting themselves at risk. They chose to invest in the lives of precious little boys whom they did not even know. And as a result, God honored them. We see in verses 17 through 20. Then we see Jochebed, Moses' mother. She saw that Moses was a fine boy, scripture says. Most scholars and theologians believe that references the fact that he was very beautiful, that it was very noticeable that he was healthy, and possibly even indicating there was a marked difference about him, that there was a special anointing upon him. But she recognized this, and immediately she did what she had to do. She took action. She hid him. She acted in faith, and she let her faith speak louder than her fears. We see in verses 1 and 2. Then we see that Jochebed prepared a basket, put her baby in it, and placed it among the reeds in the Nile River. Now, I don't know about you, but that doesn't sound like a very safe plan to me. Um, For those who don't know, there are crocodiles that dwell in the Nile River. That's not exactly, uh, you know, a warm, fuzzy place for your child to lay. And yet I fully believe and scripture indicates that she was led by the spirit of God, that there was a plan that was set in action and she stepped out in faith and she did what she knew she needed to do. 
Although it didn't necessarily make sense, she obeyed anyway. Church, we need to be reminded that his ways are higher than our ways. I couldn't tell you how many times his plan for my life didn't make sense to me in the moment. It wasn't until later and I look back and I see the sovereignty of God. I see the leading of God. But that may not have taken place had I not chosen to obey despite my questions, despite my doubt. Church, don't think that doubt is a sin. You are human. God understands you better than you understand yourself. It's what you do with those doubts. Take them to him. Place your trust in him. Even when you're doubting, even when you're full of fear, give it to him, and he will increase your faith. Then we look at Miriam, Moses' sister. I just love how scripture says that she stood at a distance watching. She stood at a distance watching. What a beautiful reminder, church, that we and our children are always under God's watchful care, even when he appears to be out of view. Take heart this morning and know that he sees. He sees where you are. He knows. And he has the remedy. Exodus 2.4 shows us this. And again, I I really feel that this can be likened as well as Miriam being an intercessor, standing and watching, keeping guard. You know, um, there are times where the Spirit of God may wake you in the night to pray for someone and you have no idea why. And then maybe later you find out something that was going on. God is so good. He knows exactly where every one of us are, what we have need of, even before we ask. But I would implore you, church, are you willing? Are you willing to be a Miriam? Are you willing to stand watch and intercede on the behalf of others in a generation that so desperately needs the hope of the gospel? Then we see that God sent Pharaoh's daughter to the exact place at the right time. Isn't God so good that way? God knows what we need, church. She went down to the river to bathe. She saw the basket. She had her slave retrieve it, and she had compassion upon this child. And as we pray for our children, God in his sovereignty, church, take heart, will send the right people at the right time. We cannot always be there with them to watch over them, to protect them. You know, we're embarking on a new journey now. I know I've joked about it before, but I didn't realize what a control freak I was until our oldest started to drive. And he's not a bad driver. He's a good driver. But just simply not being in control, that is a really unpleasant feeling. (laughs) And now we get to do round two with Hannah. (laughs) And she's doing really, really well so far. But I've already been informed by Abby, who's my backseat driver. Mom, I want to learn with Dad. You scare me when you make all those comments that she's driving. (laughs) So I don't win the award for the best uh, teacher, I guess. I, I didn't miss the mark when I didn't go into driver's ed, I guess. But, you know, it's difficult. It's difficult to, to totally relinquish control, to trust, and yet it's always worth it. And we have to remember that we, even though we can't always be with our kids, and even though uh, we're not always there to protect them or to whisper truth in their ear, the Spirit of God is. The Spirit of God is. And God will raise up others and place them in their past to tell them what they need to hear when they need to hear it. To just share hope with them. To help point them back to Christ. I will never forget when we did street ministry and uh, witnessing when we were in Bible school in downtown Providence. There was one gentleman in particular that we came across one night. He was probably in his mid-40s at the time. Uh, He was inebriated at the time. And as we're standing there talking to him, he was finishing some of our sentences and scriptures that we were sharing with him. And he said, you know what? I learned that when I was about eight years old in church. I really haven't been since, but I remember it. That, the power of God's word. And maybe this morning some of you are here and maybe you have a child or a loved one that's, that's strayed. Maybe they're not serving the Lord right now. Take heart. Don't lose hope. Continue to pray for them. Pray that God would raise up others, that he would place others in their path to help point them back to him. He'll do it just like he had Miriam there watching over her little brother. He will send others just like he had Pharaoh's daughter arrive at just the right time. God will send others to minister to our loved ones and help point them back to him. Um, The fact that Miriam asked, then Miriam asked if she could get a Hebrew woman to nurse baby Moses. The fact that she asks really suggests that Jochebed was very intentional and had a plan. She had instructed her daughter, look, this is what you're to do. And I really believe that God directed this plan. We can always trust his plan because he always has a perfect plan. He provided the very best care possible. I mean, I don't know about you, but this particular verse just blows my mind. Because Miriam said, you know, do you need me to get a Hebrew woman to nurse the baby? And she said, yes, please do. 
Well, she certainly had one in mind, his very mother. And so God used this and, and totally provided the best care for Moses in the arms of his own birth mother. Just what a beautiful picture of God's attention to detail, his loving care, and that he knows exactly, exactly what you need this morning, church. Pharaoh's daughter then not only agreed to this plan, but check this out. She paid the mama for nursing her own baby. <laughs> Is that just not like God? God always goes above and beyond, doesn't he, church? When we don't settle and we wait for his best, it is always so much better, so much better. And then we thank God then. Thank you, Lord. You didn't answer my prayer the way I prayed it because your plan was heads and tails above what I had wanted to do. Pharaoh's daughter not only agreed to this, but even arranged for Jochebed to be compensated for taking care of her own child. That's the favor of God. That is God just doing something so beautiful. Then we see that Moses was miraculously restored to his parents. What an awesome reminder to us this morning, church, that God can and does restore today, even when it looks as though all hope is lost. Even when it looks as if every door has slammed in your face, God has the final say. And God is a restorer. He is a restorer of relationships. He is a restorer of the brokenhearted. He is our healer this morning. And so we need to be reminded that just like Moses was miraculously restored to his parents, can you imagine? Even though I know Jochebed had great faith, and I, I really believe that she was carrying out the plan that she felt God had set in motion and she was being obedient, what about as out of control as I felt when I let a child get behind the wheel? What about placing your child in the river and watching him go? That's when trust comes into play. And we see that God restored him back to her. How beautiful. So don't lose heart this morning. It may be a wayward child. It may be a dream that you've given up on. A promise that you felt God drop in your spirit years ago. You still haven't seen it come to fulfillment. It may be a relationship that you want to see work out and you just don't know how that's going to happen today. God is still in the business of restoring today, church. Amen. Amen. We then see that during his early years, Moses, in his formative years, how precious his own parents had the privilege of instilling godly values in him. His own parents had the privilege of caring for him, of nurturing him, of teaching him about the things of God. Church, may I encourage you today? Don't ever grow weary with the mundane things. If you're parents of young children, I know some days may feel like you accomplish nothing. You accomplish so much more than you think you are. Every little diaper change, every clothing change, there may be multiple ones <laughs> throughout the day. Um, it matters, and you're investing in the life of a precious little one that you have no idea what God is going to do with him or her. And for those of us that maybe our children aren't so young anymore, there are little ones in our church. There are teenagers in our church. There are young adults in our church that need mentors that really, truly are more than open to the idea. They would welcome it gladly. Pray, pray. Let God lead you to someone. Let God lead you to whom you should invest in because it's not a matter of whether or not you should. It's a matter of to whom would God send you. We need to, to seize those opportunities to shape those hearts and minds by pointing our children to Christ through our words, through our actions. Our children more than ever, more than ever need a strong spiritual foundation. We've got to choose to invest in our kids. We have no idea the value of those investments. And they've got to be made not only by parents, not only by parents, by teachers, by aunts, by grandmothers, by friends, by neighbors, by every member of the body of Christ, you have a vital role to play. God may call you to intercede on behalf of our children in this generation. 1 Corinthians 15, 58 says, Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. We need to remember, church, that there is no task too small. And don't underestimate just the power of a kind word, an encouraging word to one of our youth. Um, just let them know you're praying for them. Let them know you're proud of them. Wrap your arm around them. Let them know that they are important in our church body, that they have a place. We need to invest in our kids and in this generation. You see, in Exodus chapter 2, as we just read, we look at Jochebed, this godly mother. But... 
The one thing that she had that all of us have was this precious basket. Now, I know each of our baskets may vary. Each of our baskets may look different, but the fact remains that we each have a basket. She chose to place her basket in the loving care of her Heavenly Father. And I want to ask us this morning, are we willing to do the same? Are you willing to, pray, to place your precious basket in the hands of a loving Father? How do we do that? Just three simple points this morning I want to share with you. The first is this, prepare your basket. Prepare your basket. In verse 3, we read that she used tar and pitch, and she sealed and protected this basket. So how do we protect our baskets? Prayer. Prayer, prayer, prayer. That is how we protect our baskets. If you will, that's the seal, just like that tar and pitch, is the prayers that can cover those that we love, those situations that are so heavy on our heart, our children. Philippians 4, 6 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And James 5, 16 says the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Church, we must pray over our children. We must pray for our generation. If we do not, who will? Who will? We've got to pray. We've got to pray. That is their sealant. That is their protector. Those that have no one to stand in the gap for them, that's you. And youth, you're not too young even to pray for those that are coming up after you. You're never too old or too young to be used in the ministry of intercession and to pray. And don't ever underestimate the power of prayer. I don't know why it is, but we marvel sometimes when prayers are answered like we're surprised, like, wow. I can't believe that happened. Like, do we know the God that we serve? Do we truly know the God that we serve? But when we pray, even specifically, I implore you, pray according to God's word, according to his will, but pray specifics. I still, I just, I stand in awe when I see God do it and God answer it. Um, whether, I mean, just fill in the blank, specifics specifics. God is a God of specifics. He's a God of detail. But pray, that is how you prepare your basket for the uncertainties of what lie ahead. Prepare your basket through prayer. Susanna Wesley, it's recorded that she had 19 children, nine of whom sadly passed away as infants. And she prayed for one hour every day for each of her children by name. By name, and in case uh, you didn't catch her last name, Wesley, her son John went on to be instrumental in the spiritual awakening in England and spearheaded the beginning of the Methodist Church. Don't underestimate the powers of your prayers, how God can work and move in the heart and life, not only of your children, but of other children, of spouses, of parents, of neighbors, of co workers. There is power in prayer, church, and that. And that alone is how you prepare your basket for what lies ahead. Ephesians 6, 18 says, And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. The second thing this morning, what do we do with these precious baskets? You need to place your treasures in your basket. Place your treasures in your basket. You might say, well, what, what are my treasures it may look different for every single one of us today. For some, it may be your children. Maybe you have been really burdened for your birth children lately, and you just really know that you need to release them into God's care, and you need to give them to the Lord. It may be unfulfilled desires and hopes and dreams that you really thought this is the way it was going to play out, and that door shut, and you've been devastated, and you've been holding on to it, and it's so dear to your heart, and you just don't know how to move forward. I encourage you this morning, place those treasures in the hands of an all-knowing, all-loving, all-powerful God. Maybe for you it's your marriage. Maybe you've been praying and you've been crying out to God, but you don't see any hope. You don't see any change. Place your marriage in the hands of an all-powerful God. Place your health. Maybe you've gotten a bad report, as Brother Dave even mentioned earlier. Maybe fear is just coming against you. Call out to God. Place your treasure in your basket. Maybe it's the health of a loved one, and you're so burdened for them. Maybe it's the well-being or salvation of a loved one. Place that in the hands of an almighty God. Whatever your treasure is this morning, church, be willing to place it in the basket. Be willing to let go of it. It's never a question as to whether or not God wants to move on behalf of your loved ones and move on your behalf. But he's a gentleman. 
The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He's not going to force us to serve him. He's not going to force us to give everything to him. But if we let go of our grasp, he can take it from us and a weight can be lifted and we can know that I'm not in this alone and I don't have to be in this alone. And I have someone fighting for me who is all powerful and is able. We've got to place our treasures in our baskets and choose. Again, it's a choice to pray. It's a choice to trust. I would be lying to you if I stood before you this morning and said, oh, prayer just comes so naturally to me. I just wake up and I just want to spend my whole day in prayer. That's usually not the case. It's a choice. And sometimes you've got to fight hard for it. I was laughing with our Wednesday night crew. It always seems like no matter how you plan, there are attacks big and small that come against you. And when our kids were really little, we had a cat by the name of Bandit. And without fail, the mornings that I would allow extra time and get up and I'd kneel at the couch, my cat would lay right in the small of my back every time, every time. And I'd shoo him down and he'd go right back. And of course, I was very distracted. <laughs> it could be something as simple as a cat to, to a real attack, something very uh, difficult that can really trip us up. But the bottom line is, it's a choice to pray. And so don't say, oh, I just don't feel like it. That's me. That's me too. I, I can tell you that's Pastor John. And, and that doesn't mean that, that you're not spiritual enough. We're, we fight the flesh because the enemy knows that if we are on our knees in prayer, that's where the battle is won. So don't you think that he's going to try to trip us up any and every way he can. We have to choose to pray. But secondly, placing our treasures in that basket, we've got to choose to trust. It doesn't always come easy, but let me encourage you. God knows every single one of you by name. He knows those of you that have been betrayed. He knows those of you that maybe it's harder for you than others to trust because it's really been an issue in, a, in your life, maybe largely due to what's been done to you or situations that have occurred in your life. But it is possible. If you're willing to trust, God will enable you to do that. And there's nothing like it, church. There is nothing that compares to having peace that comes from trusting God and relinquishing that grip and placing your treasures in your basket. Psalm 22, 5 says, To you they cried out and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. Matthew 10, 29 to 31, just a beautiful reminder. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And yet not one of them falls to the ground apart from the will of your father. Even the hairs of your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. You matter to God, church. You matter far more to him than you could even imagine. And your treasures matter to God. What's precious to you, what you hold sacred, what you really value, it matters to God. And I encourage you this morning, give those things to the Lord. Nothing, absolutely nothing is impossible with him. So we need to choose to prepare our basket, pray. We need to choose to place our treasures in our basket, trust Carrie Clarensaw, the, formal uh, the former National Women's Ministry Director, wrote a book entitled Fully His, uh, Make the Life God Offers Your Own. And it's, she writes in it, throughout scripture, we see glimpses into God's heart and the things he wants for his children. He longs for us to depend fully upon him, just as a small child rests in the loving care of parents. We don't have to make sense of every circumstance or live in our own wisdom and strength. God wants us to trust him with our whole heart. You see, church, we've got to remember that he loves us. He loves us as his children. And not just loves us, loves us perfectly. Something that can never be said of anyone else. No human being loves perfectly. But God our Father loves perfectly. And therefore, we can trust him. We can trust him. He's not going to make a mistake with your life. He's not going to let you down. We can trust him. We have to remember that he loves us perfectly as his children, more than we could ever possibly imagine. And not only that, he loves our children even more than we do or ever possibly could. That's just amazing to me. He loves our children even more than we do. And so knowing that, we can entrust our very lives to him. Knowing that, we can entrust our treasures to him. Knowing that, we can entrust the lives of our children into his hands. So I encourage you this morning, put your treasures in your basket. Trust him. And thirdly this morning, put your basket in the water. Put your basket in the water. That had to be incredibly scary for Jochebed, and yet she did it. 
It was an act of obedience. It was an act of obedience. Put your basket in the water or obey. After we've prayed, after we've chosen to trust God, then we've got to choose to obey him. Listen for his voice. Church, so many times, it is not a matter of a lack of God speaking. It's that the noise of everything else is way too loud and we can't hear him above it all. Amen? He's speaking. You know, I know my husband's voice. I recognize it immediately. But he could be calling out to me and telling me he loves me. And if I'm downstairs in my classroom, it doesn't mean that he's not saying it, but I'm not going to hear it because I've distanced myself from him. I'm not going to hear it. Or if there are many people and they're all in the same decimal and they're all calling out my name, I might not be able to pick out his voice for the volume of everything else that's going on. Church, sometimes we need to come away and be separate. We need to, to draw near to God, and he has promised us in his word that he will draw near to us. We need to get away from the noise of the world. We need to lower the volume of everything else, and we need to listen to his voice because he is speaking. He can be trusted as well. We need to listen to his voice. We need to hear him, and then we need to do what he says. It doesn't stop at just hearing him. We need to obey. Proverbs 16, 3 says, commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, we're all familiar with, but we need to trust in him with all our heart. Lean not on our own understanding. Acknowledge him in all our ways, and then he promises he will direct our path. Church, we've got to put our faith into action. After praying, after trusting, then we need to obey. James 2, verses 15 through 17. James chapter 2, verses 15 through 17, we read, Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to him, Go, I wish you well. Keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about his physical needs. What good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. Church, it's not enough just to acknowledge the need. Then we need to let God direct us and do something about it and be, make ourselves available. There are many, many, many needs, and know that you can be used of God, and God desires to use you. God used Jochebed, God used the midwives, God used Miriam, and God used Pharaoh's daughter, all, each one of them, because they chose to act. The midwives defied Pharaoh's orders, sparing Moses' life. Jochebed hid Moses and placed him in a basket because she trusted God more than she feared men. And then Miriam stood as a watchman, and then she made herself available. Again, I cannot stress that enough. Sometimes that's all God is looking for. He's looking for willing vessels that will say, yes, Lord, I'll do whatever you want me to do. And I'm not going to place my trust in my ability, but I'm going to place my faith in your ability. The Egyptian princess allowed herself to see a need, and then she did something about it. She felt compassion but it didn't stop there. Then she acted. She, she hurried up and she got her slave girls and she had them retrieve the infant. And then she gave the infant back over to Jochebed so that he could be well taken care of. All these women were used in tremendous ways. And what a difference it made in the life of a child. But church, it didn't stop there. We know the end of the story. Not just Moses, but in, it made a difference in the life of an entire nation. An entire nation. Don't think, well, I'm just one person. Or, you know what? I can't tell you how many times over the last 22 years that I have taught a Sunday school class or led a youth group where literally I had less than five kids. When we started uh, pastoring in Central City, the first night I did youth group, I had one girl. You know, I had a choice that night. I easily could have said, well, this isn't the right season. You know, maybe there's just not enough interest. Uh, maybe there's not enough students here. And we'll just put that on hold. And we'll wait. Now, if God would have really shown me that, hopefully I would have been obedient. But you know what? I said, God, you've called me to this, and I'm going to be faithful to this. And to God be all the glory. In a town that graduated 35 kids, youth group ran 55 students. What if I would have said no when it was just Gina? You know, don't, don't despise small beginnings. If God is calling you to do something, if you're that stay-at-home right, uh, stay mom right now and, and you feel like, oh, I don't know, I feel like I'm destined for greater things, there's nothing greater. There's nothing greater because those little ones, you have no idea how God is going to raise them up and use them to be powerhouses in the kingdom of God. If you're teaching a class and maybe numbers have dwindled, give it to God. Be faithful to what he's called you to do. But each of us has a role to play. And each of these women, they were willing 
to step out in faith and act on behalf of Moses. And as a result, not only was his life spared, but an entire nation. You have no idea how God is going to use those that you're praying for. God's going to use those that you're investing in. We can make a tremendous difference just by a simple act of obedience. Worship team, if you would start to make your way up, we need to obey. We've got to prepare those baskets in prayer. We've got to place our treasures in those baskets by trusting, and we've got to be willing to put those baskets out on the water by taking a step of obedience. You see, each of us this morning has a precious basket. Will we prepare them? Will we place our treasures in them through prayer and through trust? Will we put them in the water in obedience? Church, we have got to battle for others in prayer. We've got to entrust our sacred treasures into the hands of a perfect father. And like I said earlier, for you, maybe this morning it's not your children, but maybe it's a hurt. Maybe it's an unfulfilled desire, a broken dream that you have, and you just feel so stuck. God's calling you and saying, are you willing to give it to me? Are you willing to give it to me? Because I can still do something beautiful with it. I can still allow my plan to be fulfilled in ways that you never dreamt possible. You see, church, we've got to entrust our sacred treasures into the hands of a perfect father. And then we need to do what he leads us to do. Isaiah 43, verses 1 through 3. Just a precious promise from God to us today. And that is this. But now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze, for I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. That's a promise, church, this morning. Scripture doesn't say if you pass through the water, Scripture doesn't say when you go through the flames. It's a matter of when. It will happen, but God has promised to be with us. He's promised to be with your loved ones. Call upon the name of the Lord. Choose to pray, choose to trust, and choose to obey him this morning. There are the lyrics to a song written by Babby Mason entitled, Trust His Heart. And the chorus simply says, God is too wise to be mistaken. God is too good to be unkind. So when you don't understand, when you don't see his plan, when you can't trace his hand, trust his heart. Trust his heart this morning, church. He will not fail us. He never has, nor will he ever. I want to invite you to stand with me this morning. Oh God, we worship you today. I ask that you would just bow your heads with me this morning. Lord, I pray right now, God, for everyone in this room. God, we give you thanks today for our mothers. We give you thanks today for godly women and godly moms who have invested in us. Lord, who have been faithful, who have prayed, who have sought your face, who have chosen to trust you and have chosen to obey. And as a result, we stand here today, God. But Lord, it doesn't end there. God, you're calling us today and asking us, will we do the same? Lord, I just pray for the brokenhearted among us today. God, I know, I know that there are those today, Lord, that this is a really difficult day for them, possibly because they don't have their mother or possibly because they don't have their child. Or maybe, Lord God, they've never experienced the joy and they've longed for it. But God, you have not forgotten them. You have not forsaken them. God, you are the restorer of broken dreams. God, you can do all things. And Lord, we place our trust in you today. God, I pray today, Lord, that you would encourage every heart. God, I pray that you would bring clear direction, Lord God. Lord, that you would reveal your plan. Lord, we look to you today. God, first I just want to pray, Lord, if there is anyone here, Lord, and they do not know you personally, God, or maybe they have walked away from you and they know, Lord, you're speaking to them today that it's time to make things right with no one looking around. If there's anyone here today and you'd say, Jen, I need Christ in my life. I need to come back to him. I've been trying to make decisions on my own and it's simply not working. I need his guidance in my life. I need his forgiveness applied to my sins. If that's you today with no one looking around, 
I just ask that you'd slip up your hand. I just want to keep you in prayer today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. I see that hand. Jesus, Jesus, we call upon you. Lord, I pray for those that raised their hands this morning, oh God, that they would simply profess you in this moment as Lord and Savior of their life. Jesus, I pray that they would simply pray, God, thank you for sending your son. Jesus, I accept you and I give my life to you. I ask for your forgiveness. I want to serve you with everything in me from this day on. Thank you, Jesus. For those, God, that need to come back to you, I pray, Lord, that they would just lay it all down, God. Lord, that nothing and no one would get in the way of them having a right relationship with you. God, I pray for those today that need direction, God, that they would call upon the name of the Lord, that they would hear from you. Lord, that they would hear your voice and walk in obedience. Jesus, we thank you. Jesus, we thank you. I know there are some here this morning and you just need a reminder that God's with you, that he hasn't forsaken you. We're going to begin to sing a worship song that God is our good, good father today. We're going to open up these altars. It's still early. Let's just spend a few moments. If you have a need today, if you've been burdened on behalf of loved ones or relationships, broken dreams, your health or the health of a loved one, our generation, our children, let's just come and call upon the name of the Lord today. Church, let's bathe them in prayer, those situations, those individuals. Let's choose to trust him. Let's do battle this morning. Let's come. Let's just find a place of prayer before we close our time together. Thank you, Jesus. worship him just come here to the center pastor john and i will meet with you to anoint you with oil and pray with you if you have a physical need an emotional need if you're burdened on behalf of a loved one let's just come and seek his face today